be yourself. I am you always are. myself. No, I'm saying you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome to the, today's podcast. I'm here with Sheikh Asim Al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we're just here in Uganda and uh, we had the journey of faith this weekend. And uh, it's your first time in Uganda, Sheikh? Yes, it is the first time yeah. for me in Uganda and it was a beautiful experience, beautiful country, beautiful yeah. people. The conference was a, a great success, yeah. alhamdulillah. And hopefully, to be able to do one again. Inshallah, inshallah. You've, you've done uh, a few events in Africa before. Yes, I've done uh, most of my events in Africa were with the Journey of Faith. So I, I've done a couple in Nigeria and I had uh, done also a couple in Kenya, Nairobi, mm. Alhamdulillah. And I've been to Ghana once, but uh, that, that's about it. Inshallah. So how do you find the Dawah in Africa? Because you've traveled all over the world, mashallah. You know, I've been following you ever since I became a Muslim. You just every week. You're you, not. You're you, that old. <laughs> <laughs> like ten years now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil and Subhanallah. Like even this week, you've been in like three different places, right? I've seen you in Malaysia and UAE. Subhanallah. You know, Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. You can't keep up with you, Sheikh. Yeah. Well, well, this comes once every like two, three months. Mm. So I'm almost idle for a couple of months or three months until I get an invitation to a conference or a convention mm. and then I attend. It so happened to be at the end of uh, uh, March, April and the beginning of May, mm. Alhamdulillah. And, and still a couple of weeks from now I'm going to go head back to mm. Dubai for a um, uh, number of lectures there. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah. So Sheikh, you was uh, born and raised in Saudi. Correct. Uh, do you mind me asking about your study? Because mashallah you... Well, I'm born and bred in Saudi. I've studied all my educational years in Saudi. I did my uh, um, regular schooling up till high school in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Then I got a BA in English Linguistics from King Abdulaziz University. In about seven to eight years down the road, mm. I got my high diploma in Islamic studies from Umm Al Qura University, Inshallah. and the reason behind that so that I would be licensed not to kill, but rather to give dawah. <laughs> uh, you know, if yeah. you have a, a degree in English linguistics, yeah. you could be easily questioned. What are you doing? Mm. You're you're not qualified to give. Yeah da'wah or to yeah. give a lecture or to make a khutbah of Jum'ah. Yeah. So I was advised to take this diploma, high diploma, which is equivalent to uh, a BA. Yeah. I can do my masters with it yeah. uh, from a prestigious university such as Umm Al-Qura in Mecca. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, and I, and I, d I did that and that's it. Right. You know, a lot of people think you were raised in America or England because of your, obviously, you have, mashallah, good accent. Oh, good as in you yes. know, you sound like an uh, indigenous American almost. A red Indian, you mean? No. Oh. <laughs> those, those are the... Those are the indig <laughs> what, what is it? You know what I mean, Shay. I mean, okay. so... I, that's wrong. That's not <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, well, no, you know, you sound like someone... Uh, <laughs> so uh, born and raised in, in the States, subhanAllah. Yeah, well, alhamdulillah, this... Uh, if I tell you, I have to kill you. So, <laughs> let's keep it at this. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless me with... Uh, 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 a good uh, or a fair way of, of speaking English and mm, it, it all depended on my upbringing when I was yeah. a child we and my siblings grew up in uh, the eastern province of yeah. Saudi Arabia where Aramco is based yeah. so our interaction with Americans was quite uh, yeah. a lot yeah. and from there on we developed it bit by bit Alhamdulillah. You know, we don't hear of that many du'at or scholars in speaking in English from Saudi. Uh, there are plenty, actually, but I was fortunate mm. to be on a number of satellite channels. Mm. So, uh, as I said, basically, 
uh, there are a lot of du'at mm. from Saudi Arabia who speak excellent English, maybe better than me. Mm. But my only advantage and gift from Allah Azza wa Jal that I was chosen by many satellite channels and mm. famously by Peace TV, by Huda TV, yeah. to be on their mm. airtime a yeah. lot which mm. gave me a lot of exposure and people mm. knew me if not from these satellite mm. channels from YouTube mm. so this is why people alhamdulillah yani, look uh, forward to, mm. to hear from me though I don't have anything to give yeah I mean the thing is with especially Askuda you know this uh, in see a lot of people in, in the West in England not so much Huda it's more Peace TV which is which you're famous for okay. but in Africa and, and Asia you know Ask Huda is, is huge subhanAllah you know you have a huge uh, viewership to, to tell you the truth Ask Huda was a, a turning point for me because mm. Allah blessed me to work, to do a lot of programs for them mm. since 2001 mm. and my company that I was fortunate to work for mm. at the time. The CEO, may Allah bless his soul, mm. uh, engineer uh, Farid Al Khalawi, he was one of the entrepreneurs and he was so dedicated to his work. Mm. But at the same time, he was an excellent administrator. So mm. he used to say, if you have your mobile phone on, you have your email mm. uh, working, you can easily go wherever you want worldwide as if you are operating the nine to five hours. Yeah. So I used to often go to Huda mm. and do my programs. And it seems that the Muslim world is in need mm. of someone they can trust yeah. and someone who would give them the answer in a way that suits mm. their needs while being in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. So, one of the advantages of answering people's questions for them is that you don't give them a prolonged answer that mm. would require a lecture. Mm. So, what's the ruling in so and so? Halal mm. or haram? This is what I want. Don't mm. give yeah. me a ton of evidences because I trust yeah. you. Yeah. But if I need clarification, would you be able to do that? Certainly. Yeah. This, this is a, a, the problem, you know, a lot of people will do the halal or haram, but then they don't have any evidence, and especially like England and in America. We don't really have many scholars, really, you know, who we can go to. There are scholars, mm. Brother John, but the problem is that the people are one of two. Mm. Either they're too ignorant and they know it, mm. so they don't want to make the effort to go and ask mm. or they're ignorant and they do not know it and you end up by mm. someone saying why is it haram mm. give me the evidence Akhi, mm. do you know the Quran do you mm. memorize the Quran do you know Arabic mm. if I give you the evidence how would you know that it is mm. authentic or not yeah. so it's an uh, we're not deterring people from yeah. seeking knowledge but at least you have you must have the basics yeah. so we encourage people to learn to read, to question yeah. our answers, but to cross-examine rather mm. than just sit back and mm. uh, uh, question mm. our answers without any proper knowledge to mm. back that up. Yeah. So, well, what we're seeing in England at the moment with the the youth, you know, I'd say under 30s, under 35s, they're coming out of this uh, blindly following, uh, you know, a particular madhab. You know they're in the university they're educated you know and they've been and and uh, tv channels like peace tv uh, huda tv this has really opened the youth up to actually going for the evidence you know correct well true uh yani, alhamdulillah the presence of peace tv of huda tv and in some but very rare incidents islam channel mm, yeah. i've been on islam channel a few times mm and th th this had helped Dawah mm. a lot mm. because 
If I show you the amount of emails I get on daily basis, I've seen it yesterday. Shay. Of of people just saying Jazak Allahu Khairan, you've opened our eyes. We never uh, uh, knew that this thing was halal or haram or part of the deen. We always thought that it was uh, a cultural, not part of the deen. And you give us that on a, a plate. Yeah. To are you serving it to us? It shows that the people are learning because we don't have any racism. Yeah. Or as Sheikh Said say, says, it's not organic. <laughs> so it, it, it's pure yeah. ilm that we're giving yeah. to the people. It's not something that is cultural in Saudi Arabia or in yeah. the Arabian Peninsula. It is not something that is cultural in Egypt. Yeah. No, no, this is Quran yeah. and Sunnah. When, you know, when I first came to Islam, of course, this is, like the, this is kind of like when YouTube was kicking off you know peace tv it was just you know there's a famous picture you see all the peace tv presenters praying together you know you've got saudi arabia yes. india and as a new muslim i was like amazed by this you know because you see all the different colors you know and only this you know only uh, by following the quran and the sunnah do you get this range of uh, different people subhanallah islam has no race yeah islam has no color in the sense that if you come to the first straw of a masjid in Saudi Arabia, in the heart of the capital, whether Riyadh or in Jeddah, you don't have any segregation saying that, okay, nationals are in the first and second draw, expats are in the third onwards draw. Yeah. Nobody can keep a position for himself in a masjid. The whole masjid is the house of, the, of God. Yeah. You can worship him, whoever you are, whatever race you are. So the beauty of Islam is that you can end up finding someone who is not an Arab, leading hundreds of thousands of the Arabs. Yeah. Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, when he went from Medina to Mecca to visit it, a man, the, the ruler of Mecca, came out. Yeah. So he asked him, if you are the ruler of Mecca, and you come out to meet me. Who's running the affairs in Mecca? Mm. He said, I deputized one individual called so-and-so. Mm. And he said, who is he? He said, he's one of our freed slaves. Mecca is the mm. origin of uh, the Arabs, mm. the elite of the tribes. And he said to him, you appointed and deputized a freed slave on them? Mm. He said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen. He is a learned man, he, he memorizes the Qur'an, he knows the fara'id, and he knows the sharia. He said, SubhanAllah, Umar says, SubhanAllah, Allah uplifts people with the Qur'an, mm -hmm. and he downfalls and, and make them down with the Qur'an. So the religion is what uplifts you. Islam is what makes you a person in my eyes to be respected. Yeah. according to your commitment to yeah. it. Yes, yeah, SubhanAllah. You know, SubhanAllah, it's, it's, it's amazing to, uh, you know, I've been following, you know, all the, a lot of the PCV speakers and uh, scholars. Sheikh, this day and age, you know, Dawah is very, how can I say, it's attractive. You know, these, these, they're watching YouTube, you know, they're seeing people travel all over the world, they think we're living like, like five-star lifestyles. You know, can you just give us a bit, the viewers, a bit of insight to how it really is? See, the da'is mm. who are invited, mm. we sometimes are invited to an event in a rich country. Mm. And they provide us with five-star hotel accommodation. They I've, provide I've not us seen that yet. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> <Speak laughs> yourself. Sure. Well, this is what, <laughs> what, what the people that invite yeah. me to. So if I go to Malaysia, if I go to the Mashallah. Gulf states, uh, when I used to go to uh, the UK before mm. I was banned, uh, alhamdulillah, I wasn't banned actually, they just uh, revoked my visa yeah. and for no apparent reason, alhamdulillah. My views are widely open yeah. for the public. Inshallah, we'll sort that out soon, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, uh, so they invite us yeah. and we accept invitations because it's a great platform to meet the Muslims 
to give them da'wah, to share with them what goes in your mind, and to share with them some of the knowledge that Allah has blessed us with. Yeah. And we find that to be very uh, uh, fruitful, alhamdulillah, yeah. to the communities that we uh, visit. Yeah. Yeah, Sheikh, as I said, the, the da'wah is attractive, and a lot of the youth, they want to be involved in da'wah. And what you find in these days is some, some people are basically answering questions when they're not qualified. You know, like I get so many messages in my Facebook. I made a decision when I opened my Facebook, I'm not going to answer any. I didn't even read the message, I, I just leave the inbox. You know, we direct them to places like Slam Q, your own website, etc. But in the UK, who would you recommend? Uh, in terms of, you know, of course we have different types of speakers, some are motivational, some more uh, giving fatwa. Well, who would you recommend in like America or uh, in England? Someone who we can actually, uh, who you'd recommend us to... Wallahi, to, to tell you the truth, I have a lot of uh, brothers that I love and cherish, but I cannot recommend someone mm. without actually knowing mm. him. And fatwa is a serious thing. And unfortunately, people keep on changing. Mm. So a, a, a person, or as you guys say in the UK, a bloke who was five years ago on the same yeah. uh, uh, brain width, uh, uh, bandwidth yeah. that we had, we, good, we, we, we took from the same sources, mm. we gave the same uh, platforms yes like they've changed a lot yeah. and some of them have not have not changed they've transformed into a different um, person altogether yeah. so it's it's very difficult but um, I would highly recommend uh, yani, uh, Sheikh Haytham Haddad for example though I disagree with a number of fatwas he gives yeah. But Sheikh Haytham, yani, inshallah, is a well-structured uh, yeah. student of knowledge. He's, he's very sick at the moment. SubhanAllah. He has cancer. La ilaha illallah. May Allah, May Allah cure him. May Allah cure him. He's, uh, May Allah cure him. Well, for, for cancer, he knows better that yeah. camel mixed, uh, camel milk I, I mixed with you urine. Can you, I remember you telling me this in uh, Kano. Yes. Uh, so... Uh, a friend of mine, mm. who was a chemistry teacher, one of the best teachers in Jeddah, I knew him for about 10, maybe 12 years. We used to teach together. I happened to bump into about three, four years ago. So I met the brother and he looked different. You know, now he's bearded and he looks practicing, not as before. Yeah. So I said, how are you? Have you been? It's been like 10 years I haven't seen you. He said, well, I unfortunately developed intestine cancer. I was shocked. SubhanAllah. And he said that they extracted a portion of it surgically. And the doctor said that there's no hope for you. You're gone. So I was sick. I was devastated. And then I got hold of a research by a professor in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, who teaches in, at the university, I think in the pharmaceutical college, I don't know what they call it. And her name is Dr. Fatin Khorshid. And I, he said, I contacted her and she gave me dosages of milk mixed with urine of camels. So I took this and for about five months mm -hmm. on daily basis and then went and checked with my same doctor who was shocked and he said this is impossible it is all gone totally disappeared and he said that this was three four years ago mm -hmm. and alhamdulillah look at me subhanallah. and i said subhanallah so i aired this story and i got like bombarded with emails from everywhere asking me how to do that what are the dosages and I said I don't know I'm not an expert so I had to call the brother again and he told me about it and it is very simple the first three four days you take a mug 
of camel's milk mm. only because this would disturb your stomach for the first couple of days yeah. until you get used to it and the funny thing is one of the sisters who called and asking me about it and I said to her for the first four days or so take only a mug of camel's milk she said female or male and I said whoa <laughs> uh, you think a bit before you speak I said I said I never knew that male camels <laughs> have milk so no 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 so, I'm sorry 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 my, my bad so it happens it happens it's the old joke of what the cows drink and, yeah. and everyone says milk <laughs> yes so then after the third or fourth day you add one small teaspoon of camel's urine and this you can ask whether it's female or a male but I have no idea I think there's no difference inshallah the second day you add two spoons uh, of tea small in the mug, of, uh, in the mug itself yeah. and drink it the third day you add three sp uh, small spoons of tea of, of urine mm. in it and that is it continue on this three spoons uh, the the to the rest of the time so it's, very, it's just very little right? yes it's, and, it's and it, like it would not even you would not find that the taste is so uh, offensive mm. and, and I asked him is it offensive the taste is it in the beginning maybe it's the thought it's more the, the thought, thought of, of, of you drinking your thing is most of these uh, medications you get from the pharmacy they've got all sorts of you, things, things you don't know things you don't yes. like creatures yes. and beetles and they've got all sorts of, yes. you know and uh, uh, he said that um, he nowadays drink it every now and then couple of days three days he mm. stopped doing it every day yeah. alhamdulillah he's, he's doing well and, and this was a prophetic mm. Uh, uh, a remedy given by the Prophet himself This is mentioned in the Sunnah Yes, in Sahih Bukhari Muslim mm. to a group of newly reverted Muslims who came to Medina and fell sick so the Prophet told them to get out of the borders of Medina mm. and go to the uh, 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 area where they collect the camels for sadaqah for charity, for zakat yeah. And to drink from the urine and from the milk yeah, and in no time they got well alhamdulillah you know this is a thing you know sometimes uh, people try to use these things against islam you know oh you're in uh, this hadith it's about drinking camel urine just because it doesn't sound right by so the way if you go to india yeah. where the population oh. is almost a billion yeah. it is a normal practice yeah. to add cow's urine yeah. to their food not to yeah. their medicine to their food as a delicacy yeah. and some uh, uh, get treated with it some wash with it yeah. so I mean in Islam we, 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 Islam we have yeah. revelation from the Prophet yeah. to tell us that this is part of the religion yeah. so no one for uh, camel specifically yes specifically, correct subhanallah you know a lot of times you know the point is that when we know it is from the Quran and the Sunnah you know we should obey you know, we hear and we obey, we submit to it. And, and not only that, Akhi, if you don't want to, mm. it's up to you. Nobody's yeah. forcing you to yeah. drink it. But the option is there. Yeah. So, again, when people criticize, mm. you have all the right to criticize mm. whatever you don't like. But to be fair, look at the other aspects of Islam yeah. and compare apple to apple, the pros and cons. Mm. Weigh them. So yeah. if you tell me that, mm, okay, I looked into Islam and I found that 98% of it is excellent, perfect, logical. But there are these 2% that do not go down well my throat. Yeah. So Either I said, okay, or yeah, so, so that's, okay, that's okay with me. If 98 is okay with you, this means that the 2% two, two that you are uh, unable to digest mm. this is not because they're wrong mm. this is because your thinking process is wrong yeah. and you should know that if 98 percent nothing on earth is 98 yeah. percent uh, uh, false proof and excellent except yeah. Islam yeah, so, um, 
Sheikh, I remember I traveled to uh, Malaysia with you, mashallah, and um, we met Zaki and Naik. Correct. You've, you've been to Malaysia quite a lot. I've seen that, subhanAllah, you had many students and they were studying that like, properly, you know, for, for yes. like a full day course. What other areas in the world uh, do you like going for Dawah? specifically where it's more than just a talk or you know something where you can actually teach the students well I have to tell you the truth I'm not picky mm. see when I travel I'm not ki the kind of a person who's outgoing mm. like Sheikh Muhammad Salah mm. like uh, Sheikh Saeed Raji like mm. uh, Mufti Ismail Mink these mm. guys are young you know they they're agile they just like to go uh, hunting. Only as long, young as you feel, Shay. I feel old. <laughs> so they go yeah. to safaris. They go on their spare time after they finish. They they're entitled to have some yeah. fun. Yeah. And uh, I am the person that goes from the hotel to the airport, airport to the hotel. That's yeah. it. So yeah. I may stay five days a week in a country, not leave my hotel. Yeah. Even yesterday, we sat on the stage for the event. You got your iPad and you're answering emails, and you you're scrolling through the emails. There are literally thousands of emails. Subhanallah. Yeah. You know, and just to see, you know, your workflow as they say. I this is something I, I don't pay attention to because mm. this has become the mm. way of life for me. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I am blessed with an excellent team that. I could never have asked for, yeah. for more. So you have a, a team? I have a team of, of dedicated uh, female volunteers. Mashallah. May Allah yani, reward them. I can say that I have not spoken on the phone with them uh, for the past like seven years. I don't know how, how they sound like, most of them, that is. And it is all strictly business. They're married, they have kids, they're, some of them are old. But they're so dedicated because they've seen and tasted what I have seen and tasted. And that is yeah. the enormous amount of dua mm -hmm. you get from people. Mm -hmm. So they give me the assistance I need, which without, I would definitely not continue to do this. And I get uh, around, uh, Allahumma ameen, and, and reward their... Uh, uh, spouses and the children and give barakah in their health and wealth. I know you also have a very supportive family, subhanAllah, you know, to travel. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, my, my wife is very supportive because she also sees the benefits. The kids might be a little bit, you know, um, uh, complaining, but if you take them once every blue moon to one of your countries, that would be uh, well, inshallah. Sheikh, alhamdulillah, a lot of people know about your dawah in English, but I was actually quite shocked because uh, I used to, I was living in Kuwait for some time. Alhamdulillah, a lot of people are also benefiting from your Arabic uh, dawah, uh, you know, Zaad Academy and uh, Zaad TV. Uh, can you tell us a bit about these? Uh well, alhamdulillah, I'm an Arab. Hello. So I do teach in my localities. I've been teaching, alhamdulillah, Islam for the past uh, 31 years plus um, in my you masjid. Don't, you don't look old enough for that, Sheikh. Yeah, but yeah, again, alhamdulillah, it's, it's not how you look, it's how you feel. <laughs> Touche. So, um, uh, but I've never taught outside of my masjid okay. and outside of Saudi Arabia in Arabic. And but you came to us in Kuwait. Uh, it's all in English. Yeah, all, sorry, all yeah. in English. No, sure, yeah, yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. three years ago, um, Zad TV came into existence. Mm -hmm. And Zad TV is one of the products of Zad Company. Mm -hmm. And to those who do not know Zad Company, and they have all the right not to know mm -hmm. because the name is just a name, mm -hmm. but if I tell you that one of the products of Zad Company is Islam Q&A. SubhanAllah. Then you'll be, I mean, this, uh -huh. is, this is probably, the, probably I would say, the most beneficial website this in is, the world. This is the largest <laughs> <laughs> Islamic <laughs> website in the world. SubhanAllah. Last year, 2019, 
18 it was visited by 91 million Subhanallah. person Allah. so alhamdulillah i've been working with this website mm. islam q a since uh, late 90s when it Mashallah. all began alhamdulillah with uh, sheikh muhammad Salih al-munajid mm. and um, i used to answer questions on that mm. and three years ago they asked me to participate in one of the most uh, beneficial projects mm. and the mission and vision was mm. to deliver whatever possible knowledge that is beneficial to the Muslims worldwide so mm. they came up with an idea of making an academy mm. where a student would enroll learn over the period of four semesters mm. what any Muslim must know in order to be a proper Muslim so mm. their objective is to graduate students who can pursue being a da'iyah being uh, someone a student of knowledge what level is this at is like degree level degree it's degree it's a degree level? level it's an academy okay now all the teachers in this academy are professors in U U Saudi universities Ashram. and it's in Arabic the only two that don't have a degree that is PhD uh, are Sheikh Muhammad al Najid himself and myself <laughs> unfortunately funny. but we you know the age maybe compensate yeah. for some of, of the academics yeah. uh, we teach seven subjects every semester mm. and there are about three quizzes a week and this is all online it's it's online if those who do not have a satellite channel okay. in Arabic mm. but the classes are shown on satellite channel for those so it's on TV on TV why okay. because there are countries that are so poor mm. they don't have they cannot afford to download from YouTube mm. the lectures yeah. because of the internet prices so we only give them the exams mm. which is nothing and, 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 and gigabytes or megabytes yeah. but they can see the classes and learn take notes from is, it, is this a dedicated TV channel or is it on an actual another Islamic channel? No, no, no. this is a, a fully dedicated so, Islamic Allah, channel that, sure. with programs, oh. various uh, uh, varieties of programs, oh. medical programs, financial oh. programs, all Islamic. No women, no music, nothing inshallah haram and it's all in Arabic and at the same time uh, uh, um, the amount of dedication of high-tech involved in this academy is unimaginable mm. they have servers on the top of the line yeah. they have segregated servers so you have women forums and exams and and, and students uh, uh, platforms Inshallah. segregated totally from the boys yeah. so they there is no way of interacting you know, Subhanallah, I was really surprised when I found out about it because it, I just didn't know. And when I, when uh, the brothers in Kuwait were showing me, and they are, they was actually studying, Alhamdulillah, one of the brothers just graduated uh, recently. Subhanallah, it's very impressive. The, the, the Sheikh, beautiful. If, we, if you have the service, can this not be done in English? This is something we need. Okay, now in English, high quality, see, we, we uh, have a problem with Zad Academy, Zad Company. Okay. They're perfectionist yeah. in the sense that. When it comes to delivering knowledge, it has to be 100% pure. Yeah. So the Sheikh's strategy is not to go down on quality. Yes. So they're looking for the best quality that mm. ensures those who learn, mm. learn it the right way yeah. to be able yeah. to deliver it. So inshallah, and it's in the, the pipeline. It, it, it's, it's in quality is important. Like you say, the success of PCV, Huda TV, it's because of the quality and, and, and it's in the pipeline yeah. to inshallah. deliver inshallah the only problem is that financing nowadays is an mm. issue and that company is not a welfare company it's, mm. it's not a charity company yeah. so they do not accept any kind of donations no donation. so it has to be a business transaction a business partnership yeah advertisement yeah. with a contract etc yeah. and rarely you will find people yani, doing this so if people want to advertise they can yes contact definitely, definitely this will also support yeah, the yeah, channel yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. they can contact me personally 
even to advertise on Islam Q&A, yeah. providing it's an Islamic yeah. product. As long as it's yeah, and it's a legit. Well, that's right. But this is something that is a bit far-fetched because Islam Q&A is global. So if you have an Islamic product that you want to sell globally, then the best platform would be Islam Q&A. Yeah, mashallah. So it's a good opportunity for. Alhamdulillah. So you, you can do some investment plus you support the dawah, inshallah. Oh, indeed, yeah. indeed. Jazakallah Sheikh, I'd just like, like to thank you for accepting the invitation for our journey of faith, and uh, we would like you to come back next year, inshallah. And inshallah, we'll be in Nigeria, I'm sure, inshallah. Barakallah uh, feek, uh, John, and it was uh, a pleasure and a privilege to yeah. be with you. And I have to yani, say that may Allah Azza wa reward you for what you have done. Journey of Faith would not have been possible if it was not for your efforts. Yani, it was almost a one-man show. You taking care of it, preparing it. So I was a bit envious. I'm, I'm, I'm greedy. I was a bit envious to see that all these people who came yesterday were in your good deeds scale because you've initiated this and you started it and also mm. you took care of it. So, uh, yeah, I need, uh, I'm greedy. Okay. So may Allah Azza wa Jal, for my greedy intention, grant me some of, I mean, of, I mean, of the I mean, piece of I mean, the pie, inshallah. No, Alhamdulillah, people were very happy uh, that you attended and uh, Alhamdulillah, it runs smoothly. And, alhamdulillah. Uh, and Sheikh Ahmed Arum, he sends his salam from Kuwait. Sheikh Ahmed. MashaAllah, Sheikh Ahmed is a yeah, great. He was, he was seen us Maybe some, sometimes he will, inshallah, join us. I invited us, him. I, I asked him to come, but he's, he's a bit busy. MashaAllah. He's barakallah. recently went to England. So, so Jazakallah, Sheikh. Barakallah, uh, Sheikh. We'll, inshallah, we'll, we'll do some more podcasts in the future. Bidnillah, uh, Azza wa Jal. Bidnillah. Barakallah.